It's Masto here with a really quick Illustrator Glowforge lightning tip. This one is about rasterizing and different ways of doing it. So let's make something really quick to illustrate the concept here. I'm going to use my standard Glowforge template, which I've got another video about if you want to see that one. We'll make a, a couple of shapes here. I'm not an artist, so I'm just going to do my best. Um, we'll do that. Uh, let's make a let's make a rectangle as well while we're at it. Uh, I'll just put that over here and let's make a circle an ellipse uh, and we'll just put that over here. So this is my amazing Glowforge design. I'm going to sell thousands of these and make a ton of money. Um, let's just uh, to make things more interesting I'll press shift X to swap the fill and stroke and I'll make that uh, rectangle um, filled and then I'll make this stroke a little bit thicker on this line um, and there we go this is my beautiful design right so I'm ready to go and uh, engrave this um, actually you know what I'm gonna do one more thing uh, I'm gonna make a yeah just gonna make a cut line around the outside again this this is fine doesn't need to be so this will be my cut line um, and I'll just make this a different color so we can see it. Okay, that's a little more realistic, right? I'm going to cut this circle out, and I'm going to engrave this, this weird, I don't know, it looks like a pipe or something in the middle. So let's go to File, Save As. We'll save it as an SVG. Uh, let's call it Vector, as will become clear in a moment. Save it as an SVG. We'll follow all the recommendations. Um, Fonts convert to outline, image location embed, presentation attributes, five decimal places, and responsive unchecked. Those are the correct settings for um, for doing this. So now I'm going to go and upload this file. Here's my vector.svg. Upload it to the Glowforge interface. Everything's going to be great. And okay. Um, well, first of all, we got. The line, my thick line, is not thick anymore. Um, but then this is this is coming as a cut rather than an engrave, so I'll change that to engrave. Oh dear, oh dear, what's happened here? I've also got multiple steps here, so really I'd like these engraved to happen together, but it's it's totally messed up my file. Um, well, what happened? So what happened is the file that I uploaded here was a vector. There's all vectors in this SVG. I mean, it's an SVG with vectors in it. And a vector is a instructions about how to draw something, right? It says draw this curve, draw this curve, make an ellipse here, make a rectangle here, fill it with this. Um, and the thing about that is that in order to engrave, Glowforge has to convert that vector to a raster or bitmap, same thing. The idea is in a bitmap, right, it just says like as it goes back and forth, right, it's going to be laser off, off, on, on, on. So each individual dot in there has to be either colored you know, some level of gray or, or blank. Um, and it can't, you know, it doesn't use that vector. It uses the vector to cut, but it uses the bitmap to engrave. So the Glowforge has to take this vector and turn it into a bitmap. And the software that's on the back end that the Glowforge uses for that doesn't understand things like unfilled or unclosed shapes. It doesn't understand things like stroke width doesn't understand patterns, it doesn't understand clipping paths. There are a whole bunch of features it does not understand. And so when it tries to convert this vector instruction into a bitmap image, it gets it wrong. And the way to avoid this problem entirely that I would highly recommend is you just rasterize the thing before you send it to the Glowforge. There's an easy way to do that. There's, there's a good way and a, and a better way. I'm going to I'm going to start by getting my head together here and sele multi-selecting these things that I all want to, um, sorry, I'm just brainoing on it and pressing the right buttons. I want to select these things and group them. Now, the grouping here does not in any way affect the Glowforge. It's not going to give you one step here just because I grouped these things together. It's purely to be able to rasterize them together in Illustrator and manipulate them together. So I've taken the thing that I want to rasterize, I've grouped it together, and now what I can do is go to Object, Rasterize. Simple as that. And I would recommend, if you're going to do this, set the color model to grayscale, set the resolution. Don't choose the default 72 or whatever. Set it to other. Put in 600. That's enough for anything. Set the background to transparent. 
white is the default, you want to set it to transparent and then click OK. And now what will happen is you see here where I had that group before with stuff in it, it's now been replaced by an image. So that vector is now a bitmap image. And if I save as again, and this time I'm going to call it rasterized, all the same SVG settings, we'll go back to the Glowforge interface, we'll go back here, we'll upload this file, rasterized, upload, and now we'll see how it processes it. Hopefully it'll do exactly what we want, and I won't look like a fool. So here we go. We have one engraved step for the whole rasterized thing together, which looks exactly like it did in Illustrator, and we have our cut step still there. So this allows you inside of the same SVG file. Some people say SVGs are vector files. That's not true. An SVG is a container. It can contain images as well. So inside that SVG, we have the, the cut line as well as the bitmap image to engrave, and we're able to upload it to the Glowforge. All done, right? Not so fast. I need to change my design. Uh-oh, I can't edit it anymore. I rasterized it into an image, and I've lost the ability to edit it. Now, if if you're smart enough to have saved a copy before you rasterized it, then you can just go and open that copy and make your change and rasterize it again. In this case, I can fortunately hit undo because I haven't closed Illustrator. But if that was my only copy, I would have blown away my ability to edit it. It's also time consuming. Every time you do this, you have to remember to open the file, make the change, rasterize it, save it as an SVG. We can avoid that entire mess. Instead of going to object rasterize, you can go to effect rasterize and it's got all the same options set it to grayscale 600 transparent click OK notice now though that I didn't lose my vector it didn't change to an image so I can still go in here I can still make changes I could still edit it I could well I'd have to go in and actually edit it I could move this around I could change my path but now it has a rasterize effect applied to it so when I do save as SVG what we're going to get here, I'm just going to change the file name here to raster effect, all the same options, go back to Glowforge, and we'll demonstrate, upload the raster effect.svg, wait a few moments for it to be prepared, arranged into groups and separated into steps, and there it is. So we get the same output, we get the same engrave step and the cut step. It's been rasterized, but when we go back to Illustrator, it's still an editable vector. It just gets rasterized on the back end when you save it. So this, in my opinion, is the best way. Anytime you're going to engrave something on the Glowforge, rasterize it in Illustrator. Don't even mess with letting Glowforge like, figure out your vectors. Just always, always, always rasterize it. And if you use the rasterize effect, then it'll stay out of your way as you continue to make changes to your design over time. So I think that's the, the best of both worlds. That's my recommendation. Hope you found it useful. If you did, I'd appreciate a, a like and subscribe on my channel. Love to get my subscriber count up to 5,000 someday. And um, yeah, that's all I got. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.